situation by providing a footway that is wider than the minimum required. Adequate sight lines are also achieved giving the safe access to and from the site and the erection of four dwellings is not considered to result in any significant increase in traffic movements which would warrant a refusal of planning permission. The layout, scale and design of the proposed dwellings are considered to be appropriate to their location within the conservation area and materials are conditioned to ensure that the construction and appearance of the dwellings result in a good quality of development that contributes positively to the area. Um, an additional condition on the lake list would also ensure construction does not conflict with the surrounding land uses, notably the adjacent school. Uh, the proposals are considered to accord with the policies for new residential development within the Unitary Development Plan and the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework and are recommended for approval um, as a qualified condition for objection. Okay, can I draw members' attention to some paperwork that's been handed over to them? Um, I should have that on, on the table. Um, we do have, actually have two qualified petitions in relation to this uh, application. Do, we, do both um, petitioner, the petitioners want to speak or we can have one person to speak? Or oh, nobody to speak? Just one. Right. Okay, would you like to come forward, please? Good evening. I could just ask you to state your name, your address, and you have one. <coughs> Yes, my name is Lindsay Howe. Do I need to pass this now? Um, my name is Lindsay Howe. Uh, I'm a parent and a governor uh, of children at St. Peter's Church in England Primary School, uh, which is just about 25 metres away from the proposed access site. Uh, my address is 11 Armstrong Road, Hesborn. Um, I'm here, thank you, Chair, first, and thank you, uh, and they were also late out, but thank you for listening uh, to me this evening. Um, I'm not here to object to the proposal per se. But I am here to seek to persuade you to attach two conditions to the proposal in order to uh, promote the health and safety and well-being of the children who attend at St Peter's. Um, I'm glad you have the photographs because I know the site visit took place on Monday. I'm grateful to those who attended. Uh, but that took place at midday. Um, this photograph, or this selection of photographs, showed a typical school morning, which you won't have seen probably at midday on Monday. Um, St. Peter's School has 317 children. Uh, the proposed access, as I say, uh, would join the Gersterton Road about 25 metres from the school gate. And to put it in context for those who didn't attend, if you look at the bottom left-hand picture, you will see a um, patrol officer. Uh, to the right of the patrol officer are some children. They're crossing in front of a hedge. The hedge is the access point to the proposal site. Um, you can also see on perhaps bottom right hand picture a blue sign which depicts the main gate for the school. So you can see from the pictures how close this proposal is to the main gate from the prim to the primary school. The majority of those 317 children walk past the proposed site on their way into and out from the main school gate, uh, such as you can see there is a school um, patrol attendant there. The reason for that, and it's not shown on the, on the plans, but that Deliver Road, which is an adjacent road, is probably one of the only safest parking areas for parents to drop off their children, and that necessitates the children walking down past the site area. The carriageway, as you can see, is extremely narrow on Versterston Road. Um, in fact, those who attended the site meeting, and Mr. Parry Davis, you were there on Monday, my understanding is I couldn't make it myself, but that in fact it's so narrow that it was felt it was unsafe to actually um, do the site visit from Thurstonston Road and actually the visit done was from within the site itself. Uh, such is the, uh, the narrowness of the carriageway. Um, looking uh, at the photographs, um, the concerns of the petitioners uh, are the general narrowness of Thurstonston Road, uh, the fact that it's narrowing opposite the proposed access road, and that's particular on a uh, photograph at the top left hand uh, picture. Uh, you can see just the school being on the left hand side, uh, the wheelie bins on the right hand side of the photograph, you can see how the road actually goes in and narrows. And you'll also see how the hedgerows on the right hand side, opposite to the proposed site, uh, grow into the road effectively, uh, narrowing the carriageway again such that vehicles often ride towards the centre of the carriageway uh, when passing the school and the proposed site. Uh, and you can see that again on the bottom right hand picture, the green car, and uh, you can see that it's had to 
it's gone back in from where the hedgerows are, but previously the hedgerows have been sticking out into Burstiston Road. Um, the sight line, which you uh, can see on the top right-hand picture, that would be the sight line towards the school from the proposed site, uh, is uh, very restricted. The, there is no footpath on the opposite uh, side of the site, and also there are two bus stops, and you can see in the mid-right photograph a uh, bus which effectively takes over a great deal of the distance over the uh, right line markings, two bus stops opposite one another on Burstiston Road that further restrict the road and uh, the, the um, access that the children have. Um, and so I'm here to persuade uh, you members that um, before the proposal is granted that two conditions are attached to it. The first one is in relation to um, a prohibition on construction traffic attending between the hours of 8.30 and 9.30 in the morning uh, and then again at 3 until 4.30 in the afternoon. The children start school at 8.50, they finish at 3.30, but there are after school clubs every day after school. Uh, the construction traffic only has access to the site from Burstiston Road, there is no other access. Uh, that traffic will obviously comprise abnormal loads, uh, large vehicles causing hazards and risks to pedestrians. Given the layout and the restricted access of the road anyway, it would be difficult for these vehicles to manoeuvre. If you add into the mix uh, uh, approximately 200 children crossing at that time, it can only be an accident waiting to happen. Uh, so it's utmost importance that those vehicles are not present at the time that the children are going to school. Obviously that prohibition, we would only be seeking that during term time. Um, in respect of the second condition, uh, that is that the footpath, the only footpath that causes uh, safe access to the school, uh, I'll be finishing in just a seat for indulgence for a couple more moments, um, that uh, footpath is maintained at all times whilst the um, site uh, is developed. Uh, as I say, that's the only safe route for the children to access the school, and therefore the petitioners... Sorry, I Petitioners see the condition that that footpath is maintained at all times and that the two metre footpath that is proposed is constructed first before the site is developed. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify the reason why uh, we had the site visit. Where we had the site visit was really because of the wise and traffic that Um, is the applicant or agent here? Try to come forward. Again, if you can take the name address and uh, you have five minutes to speak. My name is Jeff Stott, I am today to report the application. <coughs> um, prior to um, the application being submitted, we had a pre meeting with the senior. Uh, Highways officer, the conservation officer, and the senior plan involved in this. And we talked through all aspects of the scheme, in particular access to highways, etc., and the appearance. From that information, we drew up the application, and you will notice in the conditions that, with regard to the highway access, this complies with the, the requirements for visual, uh, the visual displays. And also, we've gone over and above the minimum 1.8 increase in the footpath to two metres. This will give sufficient space for the children to move down and it actually meets up with the existing footpath, uh, the footpath width outside the piece of school. So we are significantly improving highway safety. As regards to the appearance of the buildings, these were uh, done in conjunction with the conservation officer and the comments that are in his, um, in, in his report uh, recommend that uh, it, it is appropriate to the conservation area. Um, we have no objection and in fact I indeed would have expected a condition put in regarding access to the site for construction vehicles. Um, it's a normal thing we do adjacent to school areas uh, that no materials are brought onto site between the hours or the school and uh, opening hours and school closing hours. Apart from that, we're happy with the what's been said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a board councillor that would like to speak on this? No? Can I open it up to you, please? <coughs> uh, thank you, Chair. So I understand. 
sometimes the love that in the first condition will be met anyway. That's a case of virus that not communicated. Um, it's just a question that pops from me into my mind. Um, secondly, it would be useful to know whether either of these conditions which have been asked for are actually being able to be alive. Through you, Chair. Uh, on the late list, I'm following the site visit on Monday. Um, members will see on your late list that there's a, a, an additional condition, and it's condition 16, that will be attached to any permission, as if permission was granted. That requires the submission of a construction management plan um, and construction method statement. So the details that um, uh, the, the objector raised would be covered in, in, in that document. So. Uh, yes, we could uh, limit uh, uh, work not to be carried out uh, whilst the school children were being dropped off and picked off. But all of all of the uh, the concerns that um, that the lady made reference to would be would be uh, picked up in that additional condition that we're already proposing um, on the late list. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just for further clarity there in terms of the. Uh, the, the construction of the pavements uh, prior to the development taking place. Does, does existing condition three actually all maybe cover that? that, that point? Yeah, it's just
Chair. This application seeks retrospective permission for the erection of a garden pavilion to the rear garden of Two Shirley Way. The pavilion has been sited approximately 1.5 metres from the shared boundary with Four Shirley Way. It measures 2.95 metres in height and is a little over 2.5 metres wide. And the floor is raised some 0.6 uh, metres from ground floor level. If the structure were enclosed, uh, that is to say that it did not have open sides and was sited just 50 centimetres further into the applicant's garden, then planning permission would not be required. However, because the sides are open, the structure is more in keeping with the character of a veranda or raised deck, as opposed to a summer house or garden shed, and therefore permission for this structure uh, is required. The pavilion is, is a timber construction and has a seating area within the main body of the structure. Uh, green canvas blinds can be fitted to the openings which can be drawn down to provide screening. And whilst these are not currently in place, the condition is proposed requiring the screens to be in place whenever the, the pavilion is in use. The applicants have also advised that additional landscaping in the form of, um, of, of an, an evergreen hedge um, ideal for the coastal location um, and also be placed along the boundary with, uh, with number four. This would soften the impact of the pavilion and also provide for additional screening, thereby improving privacy for both the adjoining property and the applicants. Uh, the structure is considered to be acceptable. It cannot be viewed from the adjacent highway, the street seat, or the footpath that runs along the western boundary of the site. But the development is not considered to give rise to noise and disturbance levels above and beyond those normally expected in association with the use of private garden spaces. With the provision of screens and additional landscaping, the pavilion is not considered to result in a loss of privacy or immunity that would warrant to refusal of planning permission. The application is recommended for approval and there is no additional objection. Is there a more council like to speak to us? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Geoffrey Watt, West Kirby and Thurston Ward. This application really affects only two parties, the applicants and their immediate neighbours, the objectors. And while I'm obviously not wishing to take sides in cases like this, my first impression, frankly, is it could not be more unmembered. Um, committee members, I think, have been sent photos by the objectors, and Matthew's put photographs on the screen for his presentation this evening. Um, and as you can see, it is already constructed. And um, in my view, it is sighted so close to the common boundary and is at such a scale and height as to be overbearing. And because of its raised floor level, overlooks the neighbour's private gardens and severe detriment to their residential immunity all contrary to policy HS11 of the UDP. Um, the halfway down page 27, <coughs> this is the National Plan and Policy Framework, um, which was here frequently, um, sustainable development that should contribute positively to making places better for people. I don't think it does. Certainly not for the neighbours. Um, Policy 
the HS11 is referred to, um, which requires um, to not to have an impact on the amenities of the occupiers of neighbouring properties, in particular through overlooking. Um, at the bottom of page 27, we are given some um, measurements. It's located um, 1.6 metres from the garden and Fort Shed Way. Um, it's 2.5 metres diameter, height to the centre of 2.95 metres, and the important thing, it's set 0.6 metres above the ground. Um, over the page on page 28, you're um, then given details about the requirements of the um, general committee development order. Um, where things aren't, requ aren't required to require permission, provided they're subject to certain limits of height and area, uh, particularly reference to um, the landlords' balconies and raised platforms. Uh, it's not they're not supposed to be within two metres of boundary or more than, more than 2.5 metres, <coughs> so clearly those limits are exceeded. Um, I, at that stage, reading the report, I was quite optimistic, but then, of course, we get to the, the next paragraph um, where this all gets sort of knocked, knocked down, as Matthew has told you. Um, and things are suggested which might make the structure more acceptable, including the conditions of uh, putting up screening when it's, when it's in use with the condition. So you come to a conclusion which, frankly, I, I cannot agree with. It's not considered to have an adverse effect, effect on the immunities which the occupiers of neighbouring properties are easily expected to enjoy in terms of loss privacy or, or output. Um, this is the sort of case where I rather think that um, our guidelines seem to be that um, our guidelines are just too generous and are too permissive. Um, ironically, putting up screens will reduce the, the privacy problem and of course make the whole structure more obtrusive. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't more disagree more with the conclusion, and I would ask you to refuse uh, this application, possibly on the grounds that, having regard to the siting adjacent to the boundary of Four Shelley Way and its raised seating area, the garden pavilion would result in an intrusive and unneighbourly form of development, giving rise to overlooking loss of privacy. The development could ex unacceptably impact on the amenities that the occupiers of Four Shelley Way could expect to enjoy and, if allowed, would be contrary to policy HS11 of the adopted Rural Unitary Development Plan. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'm just going to go on to go and talk through the photographs that I've shown. I think it would be useful if you do that, OK? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just very briefly, then. Uh, so, so uh, if I just go back to the... Um, site plan, which is here, right, so, so the, uh, this is number uh, two, this is number four, and the, the proposed, well, it's not proposed structure, the structure is um, in this location here, roughly where the little cross is. Um, so just looking at the photographs then, this is looking um, from, so it's looking uh, from the, the coast that way, um, across the across the applicant's garden, um, so the um, the steps um, come into the applicant's garden. Um, this is looking at it from um, the applicant's house. So this is the applicant's house, and then um, the the third one. Um, this is looking at it from um, the bottom uh, right hand corner on your plan, and you can just see uh, this 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 line here. Um, is the is the boundary between numbers uh, two and number four? Um, so this is the conservatory for number uh, for the applicants. Um, I, I believe this is, is a kitchen area and the rest of the property beyond. So moving to the, the neighbour there, this is the view uh, from the top end of the neighbour's garden, looking down uh, towards the, the coast. And then uh, the final photograph, um, this, this gives an idea of the full length of the neighbour's garden. That's where the pavilion is sited. Um, this, is, this isn't actually a, um, a conservatory, it's, it's more like a, a lean-to where um, shoes and things are 
kept a went on site on um, on um, Tuesday, when <coughs> Wednesday, so to have a look at uh, the, uh, the the provision from both the applicant site and, and the neighbours. Um, some existing landscaping has been to remove um, along along the shared boundary, and in discussions that we've had with the applicant. Um, that landscaping is going to be um, replaced with a, um, uh, an evergreen that's similar to the hedge that runs along the boundary of the Atkins property with the, the coastal footpath. Um, the, there are screens, I've seen the screens, and they're, they're, um, they can be fitted to the structure. Um, and, and as I say, if, if the structure wasn't open, and it was 50 centimetres further into the applicant's garden, um, then, then it wouldn't be classed as a veranda and it wouldn't, it wouldn't require um, planning permission. So, um, just going back to Councillor um, Watt's points that he thought that the recommendation may have ended up somewhere else, it's because of those, um, those points that we've, it, we've reached the conclusion that we've had. because. By moving the, the structure 50 centimetres into the garden, um, I don't think that would have any um, any uh, improved impact for the uh, for the for the resident for the neighbour than, than where it is. I, I think the impact would still be the same. We're only talking about 50 centimetres. Um, so with the additional landscaping and the screens that are conditioned, and we do believe that it overcomes um, the concerns that we as we as officers originally. Um, about our neighbourly development. Okay, can I open up? Yeah, yeah uh, thank you, Chair. I think it's uh, <coughs> it's ironic to note that this development that's been erected by number two is for the purpose of looking out across the Dee in the direction of North Wales and getting the wonderful view as it is from that area. Um, and it's quite a large, obtrusive um, development. I've seen it. I've been there and had a look at it myself. And as the ward councillor has said, my colleague, to put screens into it, they're going to make it even more obtrusive in my view. And I think it, the ironic part about all this is that these people at number two have erected this so they can have a fantastic panoramic view over the Dee. The people next door can't object to it because they can't object to loss of the view, which seems slightly ironic. Um, I have a great deal of sympathy with the residents of number four. I can see why number two have erected it, but I also have sympathy with number four in the sense that uh, it is quite an intrusive uh, situation. And whilst you can't say it takes the view, it takes the whole atmosphere, the whole um, amenity value, if you like, that they've come to enjoy by living in that rather beautiful part of our ward. So I'm, I'm concerned about this, and I had. Similar to the board account and my colleagues' comments, I have um, developed a reason for refusal, uh, which is similar to what has been said. And I'm almost inclined to move that, but I'm concerned also that in doing so, all these people need to do it, number two, we pick it up and shift it across slightly to the left or whatever, and it suddenly becomes um, approved. Now, I find that bizarre, I find it appalling, and I'm not, I'm really trying to find a way of turning it down on the grounds of it being unneighbourly, as has been suggested. Because I think to get away with this and to steal an immediate value for yourself that is denied to the people next door by very virtue of having erected it, I think is a bit off to be quite honest. I'm not very pleased with the idea of it. So I would like to try and understanding what Matthew said about moving it would overcome the problem. I still think we have a problem if we, if we moved it, uh, they moved it. But I would like to endorse what um, my ward colleague has uh, put forward as a reason for refusal, understanding that it's going to create problems. But at the same time, I think it's wrong that these people should get away with being something so doing something so unnaturally without any respect for the wishes of the neighbours. I wouldn't do it, I'm sure most of you wouldn't do it either. So I would like to formally move that reason for refusal on Shelley Way, which was, I can give you this letter on if you want, I think you may have it already, Matthew, but I'll just read it out for the benefit of the uh, committee. Having regard to its siting adjacent to the boundary with Shelley Way and its raised seating area, the garden pavilion would result in an intrusive 